Okay. All right, I think that worked. Okay, I hope people can hear me because if not, um, that's not too great. Ooh, is this in real time? I guess this isn't in real time. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so I have viewers. Hopefully it works. Hi, Kana. Um, this is my first time streaming. Please let me know if you can hear me. Anyways, okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, um, I'm just gonna wait for like, let's say a minute or two to see if anyone else wants to join. Hi, Kana. Hi, Melon. Um, yeah, this is kind of weird. Anyways, um, I suggest not having your After Effects to follow along just because it's a very heavy file. Unless you're watching this on your phone or something, then it's fine. Um, anyways, let's start. So I have AE2020, but really it doesn't matter what version you have because all of the versions are around the same. Um, if you need any of the cracks, I can always send. Ooh, it's delayed. That's perfect. All we need to know. Great. Um, perfect. Okay, I'll just talk for a little bit and pray. Um, I'm good at talking. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, so like I was saying, AE 2020, um, it's the most recent version so right now, but it really doesn't matter what version of After Effects you have simply because they're about the same. There's going to be some interface changes just because they look nicer. There may be one or two different um, layouts, but it's been the same since it was when it was created. I used to use 2017. Exactly the same. Just know that um, if you guys are aware of what Adobe Media Encoder is, you have to have the same year number for them to be compatible with each other. And I'll just take a little bit of time to explain what that is since we're here. After you're finished with a video, um, you don't want to export the video in After Effects simply because After Effects um, doesn't have a lot of file options, like formats in which you can export it. And so one of the file options, for example, is an AVI, which is a super giant file and you really don't need it. And it takes a lot of time for, um... oh dear. <laughs> um, but an AVI takes a really long time for YouTube to actually load, and as such, it's um, not too great. And so with Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder, which I can send to you, um, you can have a smaller file, and as such, it's a lot easier. I will figure out how to live stream properly sometime, Jesus. Hmm. Anyways, um, when you open up After Effects, you should have a panel kind of like the one that's probably in the screen in front of me question mark um, when you start a new project you're just going to be met with a lot of blank space and you're probably going to be very confused i use the default layout just fyi so it's going to be the same layout that you see when you open up after effects okay so the first thing that i personally do i want to import um, say the art that I have. If I write, um, this left panel is where all of your files are. So it's kind of uh, all of your video files, all of your audio files, all of them are going to be here. Over here, to the, um, on your right, the right side of the screen, that's going to be all of your um, effects. We can say effects, even though it's properties and stuff too. You can also access them on, with the top toolbar. Um, but the, that's not really advisable just because there's so much and then you have to scroll through it and you're like, what am I doing? Which is why I'd much rather um, just search for the effect. Anyways, I'm getting a little, 
ahead of myself. Um, anyways, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to import some, um, let's see, some art from my round one entry for IUCB. I'll just start with that so it's simple. And then I'm going to import some random sound file that you probably won't be able to hear. Uh, da -da -da. Do I know how to live stream? No, of course not. That would be much too easy. Um, let's just do that. How delayed is this? Oh, it's not that delayed. It's not that delayed. Hi, Marcus. Um, God. This is like the exact same intro I gave to Kelpie, so I don't think he's gonna be here, but otherwise I think we're good. Yeah, okay. Anyways, so what I've just done, I have imported the files that I needed to do. Now, um, the next thing you'll need to do is create a composition, because that's where you're going to be able to work with the project files. Now, um, since we're doing CB and music video animation, basically, my suggestion is you have your MP3 file there, if you right click, you can just put new comp from selection. And as such, it's going to make a new composition. That's the exact length of your um, audio file. Otherwise, it's a little bothersome to cut down the composition to whatever size you need. Um, when you're animating, the first thing you should do is check and make sure that your um, composition settings, the width and the height of the video is what you want it to be. Nowadays, I see a lot more CB videos being a little um, outside of the norm uh, with their proportions, but I just do uh, 1280 by 720 just because that's about a 720p HD. It, it's nice enough. Um, and then your frame rate. So 24, <laughs> 24 frames per second is probably the lowest amount you can do with a CB without it looking janky. Um, 30 would be pretty good, and I've seen people do 60, and that's very fluid and nice. Now, you're probably wondering, why doesn't everyone just render in 60? Oh dear. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's see. 
What do I do? Okay. Hello, Joe. I am delayed and I'm trying to figure out what is wrong with my... Hmm. Oh, perfect. Now you can hear me. We don't know why, but you can hear me. Um, sure, sure. Okay, okay. I'll I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't know how much of that you miss now. Anyways, um, so we have a sprite right now. She's three D. If I move X, she moves right left. If I move Y, she moves up down, um, just like a coordinate plane, right? And Z is backwards and forwards. So there are two ways that animators really move um, sprites around. They can either make a camera or they make a null object. And basically both of them are the same and it just depends on your preference. I personally think that especially starting out, a camera might be easier for you to think about just because um, in real life you think about a cameraman moving around and moving the video around. Am I still audible? Let's hope I'm still audible. Man, I should totally just live stream in Discord. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're gonna figure it out. Everything's gonna be great. Um, huh. <laughs> okay. Anyways, like I was saying, so there are two ways that animators usually move around sprites. Camera, null object. Just start with camera if you really want my advice. Um, null object is the exact same thing, just instead you're linking all of the files, such as the sprites and the backgrounds and whatever, to one invisible object that you can move around, and they all move in relation to that object. In my opinion, cameras are a lot easier. Um, so to make a camera, you right click on the... Oh shoot, I forgot to explain that, okay. Like I said before, this left side is all project files, the right side is all effects. Down here is the actual composition itself. As you can see, right now, this sprite is there for the entire time. Um, okay. To make a camera, you right click on this, you press new, and then camera. I suggest just doing a one node camera. A two node camera lets you pick a um, place to focus on, but it just gets really, really bothersome and you don't really need it for 2D art. <laughs> So you can't really see the camera because we are the camera, but um, if you want to see it and it makes it a lot easier when you're animating, you can press multiple views. I prefer two, some people prefer four, but then that looks really complicated. And especially as a beginner, you will get overwhelmed and you won't understand. So don't do that. Just start with two and I prefer it horizontal so I can see. So this is what's going on in the actual video on the right side. And then on the left side, um, you see the camera, which is this thing. And then this is a sprite. Let's check to make sure everyone can see. Hopefully so. Okay. Anyway, so on the left side right now, I have this camera right here. If I moved it, as you can see, that in the actual video, it's moving across the screen. Um, now, Cam, how do I actually get the camera moving from one place to another at a certain time? That's a very good question. Oh shoot, I got ahead of myself. So whenever you click on these buttons right here, they show the um, properties of whatever layer it is. So this is a camera layer. So if I look at the transform, I can change the orientation, which is just the way that it turns. Boop. Rotation is similar, except then it's just like one thing. I'm not gonna talk about that yet. And then position, which is the position. God, this is so self-explanatory. What am I doing? But if you want the camera to move from place to place during the actual video, then you can press the stopwatch. When, what it does is ba it's basically saying at this diamond, at this time, this point in time in the video, I want this camera to be here. Now, if I move 15 seconds forward, as you can see right there, that's the timestamp. If I uh, create a new 
it's called a keyframe. If I move the camera somewhere else, basically what I'm saying is that at this 15 second point, I want the camera to be over there. So as you can see, as the video progresses, um, the camera moves by itself. And that's cool. And um, you guys can't hear the PC audio, right? Hopefully not because, okay. Um, <laughs> anyways, so what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna just play it and you guys can see how it's a very, very boring movement. It's moving very, very, very slowly as it inches from side to side. Um, how, see, now you might be asking me, how do I make it move faster at one part and slower at another part? And that's a very good question. What I suggest you do first, highlight the keyframes that you want. Um, press F9 or, fuck, one sec. I need to do that. Press F9, or if you don't remember um, keyboard shortcuts, which I will send you, by the way, if you tap me in Discord or Twitter or whatever, I will send you a video with all of the um, keyboard shortcuts that you need to know. But if you forget, you can always right click because right clicks have everything. And then at Keyframe Assistant, there's Easy Ease. So I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference, but basically it, it starts slower and then it gets a little faster and it goes slower again. But that's a little bit boring too. What if I want it to go fast in the beginning and then slow later on? Very good question. What you can do, if you see right here, this is a graph. If you click it, it doesn't have anything. But if you click it and then you click position, which is the thing that's be being moved right now, you're gonna see a shape like this if you easy eased in. Um, Basically, it's like the velocity of the movement. At this point, it's moving slowly, slowly. Now it's moving faster, faster, faster. And then it's still moving, but it's moving slower again. So if I were to change um, the shape of this graph, I could make it faster or slower at a certain part. So if I take this yellow thing and I move it, basically what's going on here, I'm telling the camera to move really, really fast at this part and then as it gets closer to this part, to slow down. It's still moving the entire time. It's just moving faster at one part and slower at another part. I don't know how delayed I am. Oh, you can hear the music. Okay, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. <sighs> Spoiling all of my collabs. It's okay. We're okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna turn that off. As you can see, Actually, maybe maybe it'd be easier for you to see if it was like during this. It went pretty fast and now it's slow again. Mm -hmm. So this is a much sexier movement than what we had before, which was kind of like bland. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Let's see. Let's do that one more time. This went fast and then it's slowing down right here while this is just very, very boring. That's one of the biggest mistakes that beginners, beginner animators do. Um, they don't really adjust the speed and so it's not really climatic. Um, one of my biggest tips for animating is uh, just to make sure that you're always moving somehow. Um, when you're doing camera movements, when you're moving right, you're moving left, whatever, um, you want to make sure that there's never a point when the camera really pauses and just stays there. There should always be some kind of movement. Anyways, so now you might be wondering, okay, Cam, all this is is your sprite on a blank background, which is very, very true. So I'm going to import a... Uh, let's just go back to my thing. I'm just going to import a random prop. These are ruins. I just place it into the project, it looks like that. Hmm. I don't think I like that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to adjust the size of this sprite. Um, you can do that by, you can always click here and transform and then scale it, which is the size. Or you can always just press S and then that's scale. Anyways, I'm just going to put that there for now. 
So the ruins right now are not 3D yet. I need to click on that button. So they don't, don't move along with the camera layer. Only 3D layers move with the camera layer. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, but if I were to make this 3D, then it would also move along. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually move over her a little bit. And I'm going to push these ruins back behind her. So as you can see, I'm back on the top position. So I'm looking over the entire field. The camera's still here. Cam's still here, but so are the ruins. But if I push the ruins back here, that's their z-axis. Um, they're behind her now. And when you when you move, you can clearly see that they are way behind her. Um, where do I go from here? Where do I go from here indeed? If anyone ever has any questions, you can just ask them. I'll periodically check. <laughs> um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. We can do that. So, um, for those of, um, those of you who have played around with animation a little bit, this is another reason why I like camera, layer, camera layers over null object layers, just because it's harder for you to add an object afterwards with null object. So just use cameras. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I'm going to put Echo here too. She's big right now and she's 2D, so that's not really good. We're going to make her 3D and we're going to just make sure she's the same scale. I'm going to control C, copy, echo, and I'm just going to move her slightly to the left so we have something going on. Um, now here's another big thing that I notice a lot of baby animators kind of miss. Um, when you're moving, a lot of times when a camera moves in real life footage, there's a bit of a blur, right? Especially if the movement's really fast. So um, we don't have any of that right now. My footage is still just as pretty as it was before. Um, you can adjust that by clicking this button. As you can see, that says motion blur if you hover over it. And whatever you click with that button, it's going to blur with movement now. It's kind of hard to tell on here because right now I'm on quarter uh, resolution. Basically, I put this all at 25% uh, resolution. What's a synonym for resolution? God, most of you can do art, you're fine. Um, quality. Because it's not really practical for you to animate in full quality the entire time. I just put it in full quality right now so you can see what it looks like. With the motion blur turned on, as you can see, it's blurred at this part. That's really fast moving. Whereas if I turn it off right now, she's just going to look the same. And you don't want that. You want to make this as organic of a... Hi, Jinx. You want to make this as organic of a video as possible. So that's why whenever you put anything into a composition, my rule of thumb is one, turn it 3D, two, turn it um, motion blur. Unless you don't want it to be 3D because there are instances when it's easier for you to just 2D it. Um, okay. I'm just going to cut that for now. Ooh, that's another thing. Whenever you want something to not be there anymore, my suggestion, instead of um, just cutting down the actual length of the thing and doing your best, just press Control shift d you split all the layers, and backspace. Once again, I reiterate, um, I can send you the video of all of the shortcuts that you need in After Effects if you just poke me later like through Discord or through through Twitter, I will send it to you and you are going to be saved. Um, let's see. Yeah, so we have motion blur on, we have two 3D sprites, and we have this thing in the background. That's pretty good. I'm going to add a background. Once again, I am just using some stuff I had. That's a disgusting background. Let's do a different one. Sorry. God, why do all of these suck? I should have prepared this ahead of time, shouldn't I? Shouldn't I have done something like that? You know what, while I'm here, I'm just going to teach overlays. So, 
I don't like that overlay. Um, so once again, if you're an artist working in After Effects, it's gonna be so much easier for you just because you already understand a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to use this very scratchy looking thing as an overlay for the entire video, just because then it's gonna be a little nice. There's a little bit of a big net there and I kind of like this texture, right? So I'd rather not turn this 3D actually, because then if I do that, then it's going to come off screen. So I'm going to keep it 2D the entire time so it doesn't move along with the camera. As you can see, the other sprites in the background are moving. It is not. Um, we've been working in this mode the entire time that shows the three, uh, 3D layer, the motion blur, etc. If I switch back to the mode that you're probably going to see when you first open up After Effects for the first time, once again, it's right there. Um, you can see the blending modes here. Artists should notice. I'm going to switch it to overlay and immediately, right now I don't have a background, which is why you see it there, but it's overlaying my sprites. Mm -hmm. Now Cam, what if I just want a simple white background? That's a very good question. If I right click here, I can press new solid. So this is just a solid layer of a certain color and you can adjust that color here. Um, it's automatically set to the size of your composition, but you should double check always. So I'm just making it white. As you can see, it's just a plain white layer. I'm just going to put it back there for now. Ooh, ew. Um, hey, this is a good time for me to just point out, make sure that the order of your layers is the order that you want it to be in. The top layers are going to be what's in the front or not for 3D. Oh, shit. How do I uh, say that better? Um, layers that are on the top are usually going to be on top of all the layers on the bottom. That being said, if they're in 3D, then um, the layers that are actually three-dimensionally in front of the other ones are going to win out. Um, so right now that white layer is on the bottom of everything else, so it's the background. I think that's kind of ugly, so I'm going to add a gradient. I mentioned before, but this right side is where you get all of the effects, among other things. Right here, I'm just searching for a gradient. Um, there, just generate gradient ramp. There are just some general um, effects that you're going to memorize and you're just going to do stuff over time. This is ugly as hell, but you know what? I'm not planning on aesthetics right now. That is so ugly. That's okay. Okay. Um, you might notice there's something in the video that I did a lot for IUCB in particular. Um, this does not look too nice with this, which is really cartoony and a lot more different stylistically. Um, what I just did with my ruins. I'm going to put them back there because that helps me think. I just blurred them. I'm just going to use a Gaussian blur because why not? It's the most simple of the blurs. Once again, this is when, if you're an artist, your knowledge of general effects comes in handy. My rule of thumb is that if it doesn't look good together, blur it. And then after that, um, <laughs> color correct it. Ooh, color correction. That's the perfect time to say something like that. Um, so you might be thinking right now, or maybe I'm the only one thinking right now. This is kind of dark. I'm, I'm going to turn it off the overlay for now. What if I want this to be black and white or something like that? Because you want to be edgy. Um, if I want to adjust an entire video, let me check to make sure everyone's still here. OK, people are still here. Um, if I want to adjust all of the layers, um, you can just right click new adjustment layer. It's going to affect every single layer that's below it. So I'm just going to add a black and white really quickly because that's one of the easiest things for you to see. And right away, it um, turns everything black and white. That being said, just note the adjustment layer only affects stuff below it. So if I were to put echo above it and cam below it, as you can see right now, echo is the only thing that's not black and whited. All of these stuff are though cam, the ruins and the white solid which is right now a gradient. If I put it here, it's only there. 
So adjustment layers are very, very helpful in various ways. It's not just for color correction. Um, you might use it for a transition, which is one of the biggest things in animating, right? Um, I'm just going to, because I don't need it to be this big, I'm just going to trim it a little bit. So adjustment layers are useful for transitions in which you, if you want, for example, a blur transition, you can, oh, oh, that's what I want to say. Oh my God, that was so much better talking to Kelpie and DMs. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. Um, yeah, okay. So do you remember how I talked about how you could change the position of this and as such, then it would be doing different stuff. It would be moving at certain times. You can also change effects. Um, how do I say that differently? You can change, you can time effects basically. So for example, if you want it only black and white for part of the time, then you can choose what time frame to stop and start it. So in the same way, I can do that with Gaussian Blur, my best friend. Just a simple, um, why am I doing? Oh, that's another thing to remember. Um, if you want to affect a layer, if you want to attach an effect to a layer, you need to make sure you're clicking on it. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick blur transition. So right now you see blurriness is zero. Right, it, it's a little bit blurred because an emotion blur, but you can definitely tell the difference between that and zero. How delayed is this? Hmm. Okay, that's okay. Um, so if you wanted to do, for example, a blur transition, you could change the blurriness from zero Oh, uh, look, there it is again, the stopwatch. Oh, Jesus, I forgot to explain an effects panel. Okay, okay, let's try that again. So normally, you have all of these. They are the files of that you can put into the composition. That being said, when you um, put an effect on any kind of layer, if you go to effects, okay, effects and effect controls, now you can see all of the effects that are on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the blurriness over time. So I'm just gonna make it zero, 114. I'll make it zero again. But obviously you can't tell this is a transition without something to transition it to. And for the matter, I forgot to trim the solid, because I suck like that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to put some footage so you can clearly see there's a transition. Boop. Okay, this is still muted. That's good. That was just a transition in which uh, I changed the amount of blurriness over time. Um, transitions, honestly, most of us are, um, do a cop-out by getting plugins and stuff like that, transition packs. They're just a lot easier and a lot less stress and stuff, but you can always manually create them. Um, for that matter, if you want plugins, just talk to me. And once again, I would be happy to provide you links. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Are there any more things? I don't want to overload with information right away. Okay, so we talked about how to make a layer 3D. We talked about the general layout of After Effects. Um, we talked about how to see the 3D map and how to position things. We also talked about how to actually make a camera movement and how to make them tasty. Once again, um, you want to check out the graph editor, right? Mm. Those are really the basics of animation. There's never really a way for you to, uh, how do I put it? Just make something pretty at first glance. And so it's just gonna be a lot of work. Animation isn't necessarily hard, it's just very time consuming. But I am always here to give you tips if you need me. 
Oh, it's also just a lot of like Googling how to do this, how to do that, and then trying to find very niche um, assets. But that being said, um, I think those are the basics. And I could try doing another one of these, hopefully with my audio and video synced up some other time. With that, I think that I'm going to say goodbye for now. Boop. But also, I hope this helped a little bit. A is um, always open for este. Q and A's, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know if anyone's actually taking anything out of this or they're just curious to see how I would fail, but <laughs> here we are. Um, that being said, how do I turn off a stream? <laughs> oh, right there. Okay. Anyways, I think I'm going to stop there for today. I will save this up. Wait, that's what, what we got to talk about. File, save as, and then you need to save the project file. So I'm just going to call this teaching. Oops, I'll put this here. After that, then you can just control S or just press the save button there whenever there are any changes you make. Um, I recommend saving pretty often because a lot can change before After Effects auto saves for you. And you will really, 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 really cry if you miss a lot of progress. Um, that's it for now. We can talk about exporting later. Or I guess we can talk about that really, really briefly. Once you're finished with any kind of video file, you can export. And once again, I recommend exporting an Adobe Media Encoder, which is a separate program that I can also send you the link to if you need it. Just because um, it automatically sends the video file to an MP4, which is a lot smaller of a video file and also more compatible with YouTube. So it takes less time for you to upload the video instead of adding to the After Effects render queue. So you'd rather do that, and then Media Encoder will eventually pop up. Uh, but that, uh, that's all for now. I think I'm going to... Boop. I'll try doing this another time, but with audio and video synced. Okay, I think that's about it. Anyways, thank you for coming, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna turn this off. Yeah, playlist sounds good. <laughs>